These are three paintings that I have finished recently. And before they actually offer the owners, I thought it would be a good idea to actually just take the time and talk a little bit about them and my thought process and everything behind that. So um, this is one of the first ones I've done. It's called in Fields of Grace. And when I decided to do this painting, um, because I've, I've, I've up to now, mostly, when it comes to cattle, I've actually worked with direct line design. And um, so it was the first time that I've, um, or not well the first time, but that I've done a, a bigger work with actually working with indirect line. Um, when we decided that this was the one that we will do, I said to the client, what I like about it is that it will be a very soft work, but it will be very solid. So I started on it and um, I had to really figure out, um, you know, how to go about indirect light because as all of you know, you know, photographs never gives you the information that you need, especially in terms of light and color. Um, you know, we get a bit of a drawing and at least the model stands still. So it's not something that you're going to go about, you know, working from life. So much of it has to be invented or you have to rely on your knowledge and your experience actually working from life so um, of course I started you know I established my darkest darks and then my lightest lights and then I work in that narrow in that narrow range um, what was fascinating for me about this process um, and I was very surprised that, especially after I finished the work and I actually looked at it in a very low light, that it was really luminous. That it's not like a direct light painting that actually needed more light. It had a light of its own, like it is being lit from the inside. So what I have discovered with that is that what is interesting about um, indirect light is that the light actually lets the whole form as a unity and you actually see the shape of of the cows better than what you would do when you have direct light because direct light has a um, has a way and a tendency of creating abstract shapes we have abstract shapes of light and it creates abstract shapes of darkness which doesn't necessarily uh, tell the whole and the exact story in itself of the form. So I absolutely loved that. Um, for you that have actually seen the video, um, is that as I, actually as I was going through the process because I was starting with a bull and then I was onto my second cow, and initially I wasn't happy with her, so I just scraped it off. And, um, if I'm not happy with the quality of what I'm doing, and it's not saying what I'm doing, I'm just taking it all off and I will either restart the next day, I will start with a fresh session. So don't be scared of that. Apparently Sergeant has done that up to 24 times with his portraits. They do look quick and beautifully painted, but yeah, it took sometimes many sessions. So that's something that I'm not scared of. And actually, actually, the end, she came out beautifully. I loved it. One of my favorite areas in this painting is actually where she really melts here into the bowl. Um, you know, that she appears and she disappears and how she hides um, behind him. Is when I work within work is to really create a color harmony that you don't end up with a smarty box of a painting. So you want to create a color harmony that everything talks together, but also you want balance in terms of the lights and darks. And what I've loved about this painting is how the bull is, you know, the solid one, you know, with his darkness is really keeping everything together. But then you have a younger one, you know, that has a bit of darkness and stuff in him that actually balances that balances him out and then you have this beautiful these ones are pure you know 
I love just, you know, at least doing the theme of um, pushing, pushing the light and the purity, you know, that you have that almost in the color and the light, you have that distinction of um, almost having a feeling of male and female. Um, many times with, uh, um, with, with other paintings, when I have young ones, you know, when I have young calves, I would make it, I would make the colors even purer to have that feeling of being freshly born. Um, you know, that it's still like, fresh 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 it's not dirty and worn out and you know has age on it so color many times also has an emotional uh, it, it, it also yeah it has an emotional it can tell a story it can it can tell gender it can tell age so i play with light in all of that because at the end as artists it's all that we have is light and color and good drawing to tell everything that the viewer doesn't realize he's reading you know to, in order to to have emotion in that work you know to have personality um weaving into that work i i use light a lot for that so for me i loved um at the end you know uh, this complete softness how this just melts in there and how how they become one and then you know disappearing and the uh, um you know, and then being strong again, being silhouetted um, against the background so that, you know, it doesn't at the end seem that it is just this cut out, you know, on the background. Um, you know, and then, so like in this case, I, I had him and then balancing him out, but also in terms of personality, you know, he's strong, he's solid, but this one is like cocky. It's almost like a little bit of a bull that is in training. So it, it keeps together, it balances that out, but it doesn't overpower the bull. And then you have this beautiful, this beautiful softness. And then with this one, you know, in terms of light, balancing out that again. So, um, so at the end I had a, I created a color harmony, you know, more if I can say of blues and greens, you know, the end to, you know, to have a color harmony even together with the grass, that everything, that there's unity, not just in them, but in the environment as well. So, um, yeah, I'm very pleased with this one. Um, my big thing is also is to, is to have emotion, like you can read their, you can read their thoughts, you can, um, you can experience them, they are live, they are live beings. Think about both people to tears or to, you won't be able to move them. So you have to think about, um, you have to think of, you have to use the tools of art and see how are you going to channel that, how are you going to utilize it in order to tell a story, in order to move people to more than just realizing that they're just looking um, at a painting of cows. Um, the crossing in, the, in November, um, in the month of November, I was uh, on this farm where I have this and I remember, you know, after the day I have spent, I was sitting on the, on the veranda or the stoop, um, on the farm at the lady's house and um, I remember like flipping through my camera <laughs> and I I saw I saw the photograph you know I've, I've taken this one photograph and it was literally literally this you know this part and I was freaking out I was like jumping up and down because this now especially because I'm of light I was absolutely I was so excited about the whole concept of actually you know, having these ones in light and actually then these ones silhouetted into shade and then having that light reflected, it's so, oh, I was like, this, this is my number one choice in terms of my personality. <laughs> Little did I know <laughs> what I was getting myself into. So, um, yeah, I did a, I worked on the, um, bigger composition and um, uh, because I wanted I wanted the stage I wanted the stage to tell basically 
this. You know, so that it's not just that, but it's still interesting, but that you end up having all these things, but you end up in this fascinating lighting um, um, setup. The, um, on the farm that I was, there's this massive blue gum forest. <clears throat> and I was standing on this side of it, you know, it was like a small stream. And, it has just rained the day before, as you can see with the other paintings they've taken in cloudy weather. And the little stream was running and um, the cows came um, home in the afternoon and they were coming down a little slope, you know, starting to cross the river. But I was on this side of the riverbed and behind me was um, this blue gum forest and the shadow of the blue gums cast it, you know, putting the ones that's in front actually moving into the shade of the trees. So the massive challenge of this painting was just to pull off the light. And that was because I have direct sunlight hitting my subject matters, you know, on the, on the slope coming down. And then I have this area, you know, where these cows are starting to move um, into the shade but it's more it's more of a ref, uh, uh, um, it's a ref, it's a reflected filtered light you know it's like filtering through the trees but it's also reflected and then and I have these ones that are in solid that's that's in solid shade so the challenge of that was because once colors once palette if you look from white to black we are very limited in terms of uh, of one's palette you know you've got like I don't know an artist I guess can achieve about 14 or 16 values from white to black so if it, say for instance like I've worked on the others you know you've got um, you know in the indirect light say for instance you've got you've got um, You've got the full range of your values to tell the whole story from the lightest light to the darkest dark, but it's one, it's one, it's one light condition. So you've got it's like playing, it's like when you're playing a piano and you want to play a tune, and you've got the whole, you've got the whole range from, 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 um, you know, heavy low notes to high notes to tell your story. Um, in this case, you've got a narrowed value range because um, because you've got sunlight and then you've got shade. So if you look, say for instance, if you look at this cow, his dark is dark, you know, because he's got light falling on him, and then he's, you know, and, and then and then his head is in shade. Now where there where his darkest, that one. That, that darkness is the lightest light of this one that's in the shade. So you end up, you know, I have to tell the whole sunlight story in that high key. I have to tell, you know, and then I've got, so it, everything gets cut up. And, and this, I've, I've only got this value range to tell the whole shape, just that in shade. And apart from that, I just don't have one light condition. I have, or two, I have three light condition and then so you have to keep things very you have to keep things very tight you have to work extremely controlled and then you still have to work out a color harmony you know and you still have to make everything come together and make it speak as one you know, it still has doesn't has to look like three different paintings trying to squash into one you must still have harmony so I was challenged I think I scraped off more than what I painted trying to figure out you know because I I was limited I couldn't go that light here but I couldn't go that dark so it was challenging um, but I loved it and thank goodness I figured <laughs> I figured it out I survived it and I have grown tremendously um, I've grown tremendously in the process and I'm pretty pleased with it um yeah um but but my main thing was is to have all of this 
basically playing off this beautifully. I remember, you know, while I was, I was painting this and I was fading these ones and I haven't painted the background yet and I painted this one and I thought, I don't like this is my main character. I don't like it because it's too dark. It's too, because I had to go dark, um, you know, to, to keep in my value range. And I was like so concerned. And I thought, okay, you know what? I'm just going to move on to the next stuff because sometimes we're trying to fix stuff, but it's actually the unpainted canvas that is bothering us and we don't see things in context yet. So you have to trust that what you see. So I had to observe closer, but that is what it is, even if it doesn't look right at the time. And it's only when I finished the whole painting and I came and everything was covered that, wow, he literally like, as he has lit up in its shade, because suddenly it was played in context of everything. Um, if you would actually refer back to my video, um, of the process that I've painted. If you would look in the beginning stages, just maybe take a note. Um, there was at one point when I started my painting that you could see only, only that one and this one and the hectic contrast that there was. You think, how on earth is that even possible that this one could be so dark and that one could be so light? But now when you look at everything at whole, you know that it, it's in context that one doesn't nearly see as dark as it did initially with all the unpainted canvas around it and without the context that it was in. Um, last year I had the, had the privilege of being, um, the doors being opened up and I could see the, the solo exhibition of um, Saroya. I relate with him not just in terms of light, but both of us it's also got a very warm palette, you know, he loves his Prussian blues and, you know, his bright yellows and oranges and ochres and things. And me coming from the Kalari, my palette definitely tends a lot towards him. And he paints like a pig, paints very rough. He doesn't go about fiddling around. So I love that. So I really relate to him with, with many levels and I've really studied his light. And I was fascinated how he designed his light. There's even stuff that I have picked up about light that I thought that I knew that I saw that they actually did exactly the opposite. So I've learned so much and I'm, um, one of the things, there was one painting, I think it's, um, it's called Packing Raisins. And you have this, you have all these figures, um, you know, that is in this room and then it has this streak of light coming into the room, but it just burns out. It was so beautiful, just that streak of light coming through that door. And um, uh, so, <laughs> so Roya was in my head when so when I was busy with that line. Um, uh, what I found also interesting that give it a warm edge, like some of us, um, you know, would do if we just have this clean cut, um, burned out light. So, yeah, so I've, 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 in, I've enjoyed it. The one part that I really enjoy about this painting, another part is actually the subtleties. You see all the forms tossing and turning, but it's, it's one gray value. It's one value. You know, and then just having your light just um, burned out. You know, all the light just burned out and all the detail of this painting really sits in the shade. I mean, you can't, um, you can't paint everything. You have to find a reason why you want to do a painting. Sometimes it's an emotion that you want to tell or sometimes you want to tell the personalities of cattle. In this case, it was the light. Here, the, the cattle for me is the vehicle as in um, to what I wanted to say that the, the cattle was excel, actually subjected to the light. For me, this was a complicatedness, the complicated and beauty and interest that light can create. Like I said, I got really intrigued by 
the whole concept of actually painting cattle in indirect light like I've done on the first one so I just couldn't resist I had to go with it again this time I actually don't have them in grass I actually have them on um, on the ground um, what I've liked about these five together is because they really felt for me like very up close to one another you know they like there was such harmony in them there was such unity if I if I can use um, the word and still a softness a, a very very softness about this so I was excited about it but I still wanted to keep it simple um, they were actually initially in a forest um, well in the blue gum forest and but, but because it was cloudy weather uh, you know there's not like cast shadows and things were happening on them I actually took them out of the bush you know and decided to just keep them a, a very simple um, uh, you know j just a simple ear background instead of um, instead of the dark tree but um, what I saw that the sergeant would do is that he would actually he would paint his figures, you know, as with an indirect light, but in his faces, especially with certain colors, that he would actually use the principle of direct light, you know, actually having warm light, you know, and then cooling and warming again. He would actually do that on his skins and it will create more of a luminosity, you know, like a, the figures would glow and have even more life. Now, I'm finding myself actually experiencing and, in, and, and putting out my um, fingers towards that. Um, I had, with these paintings, I mean, working from photographs are so tough because they can never give you, they can never give you the color. They cannot give you true value. So you have to so heavily rely on your knowledge and of your understanding um, and work from your experience having worked from life. So much of these things um, is almost invented um, because you know that colors has to sing and they have to vibrate, you know, they have to be warm, cool, warm, cool all the time to create that vibrancy. So I would literally, you know, work out these colors and, and I've, I've, I've a lot thought about the, um, the mother of Paul, um, you know, what is that shimmering shine, that light that you get in that and actually weave it into the painting to create to create that life and that vibrancy and color that the photograph would never give you. The photograph is basically, especially with the overcast light, almost just looks like a black and white photograph. So um, um, explain to someone actually once the difference between working from light, people think actually it's it's difficult to work from life but it's actually the easiest because all the information is they just have to copy and paste you know you don't have to invent anything you can just respond all the information is there and you just take it and you put it down well in this case um, because I mean they're not gonna stand still like that it's impossible for me to do you know put the amount of time into work like that you know working from life you have to it becomes um, when you work from life, it's an emotional response that you have. You're just responding and you're putting it down. Well, I find that with studio work like this, it becomes more of a science. You have, it's a figuring it out. It's a, it's a mathematical sum that I have to solve. I have to think about the angles of light. I have to think about the, the, the color of the, of, of the subject. And it's, so, it's so difficult. This is actually the most difficult thing to do. It's much easier. Um, working from life but but yeah it has its places and I'm like really I'm really enjoying this and it's interesting that in this case I've, I've ended up with a completely different color harmony than the first one like I said you with the first one I ended up mostly with a you know with a, with a bluish greenish color harmony because of the grass and this one I think that actually more towards you know blue and more towards the reds of the ground it's got a completely different um, uh, it's, it's got a different feel to it, it's got a warmer feel to it. But still at the end, I still pushed for the same thing, you know, having unity in your color, having um, a color harmony, you know, that stuff still marries. I've almost 
romanticized it a bit in a sense um, the one thing that um, even in this case even I have to invent the light to a degree the thing that holds a painting together and actually makes it realistic is good drawing and values because values you know if, if you think of, of black to white if you can stick to your value range you know it's 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 really the value range and the drawing that makes your painting realistic um, above all you know shoot for the right value and then um, and after and color really comes afterwards because if you think about a black and white photograph why can you i mean there's no color in it but still you can see all the form you can see the whole story it's value value and drawing is the utmost of utmost importance um, to pull off a work like this even in so-called invented color um, but it's the drawing and the values that brings the realism the realism to it and of course you have to stick to what I guess or what I see or what I've observed working from life what is the nature of light and try to you know to be as close as possible um, and to be as close as possible to that so yeah that's about it this one is called knitted together because I've liked the the, the really close 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 you know, um, together and also felt that the color harmony and how they are so they are so one they really melt um, into one another these, these were like a very close family that there's no issues in this family they don't have no social distancing so. <laughs>If you're interested in my artwork, my workshop at the end of October or any future workshops, you are welcome to inbox me.